Right, thank you. Welcome everyone. This is the first call of the new TSC. Thank you uh, all for uh, supporting my re-election to chair. Congratulations to you to be becoming part of the TSC. Um, I'm very happy that, well, I should start with the mandatory disclosures first. The antitrust policy notice. So these calls are public. Anybody is welcome to join, but uh, there is two requirements to participating in these calls. The first one is to be aware and live by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed on the screen if you're on the if you're joining online, which I think everybody is. And um, this is to keep us out of legal trouble. And the other part is to live by the code of conduct, which basically asks everybody to participate in a you know decent manner. Uh, don't be a jerk. So there is a link to the code of conduct from the agenda. Feel free to look at it if you haven't yet. So as I was saying, we have a new TSE. Congratulations again to everybody for joining. Um, this is the new extended version of the TSE. So as everybody knows, I suppose, we had uh, up to now, we had 11 seats. And then um, there was a growing number of uh, working groups and projects and we decided last year to extend the TSC to in hope to have a better representation of the growing community and uh, I'm, I for one think that it was pretty successful because of course you never know really what you're going to get but if you look at the numbers you know so we had eight incumbents who ran and got re-elected um, but we got seven new members and it definitely has improved the mix in terms of representation diversity in many dimensions, whether it's, you know, gender or geography, and uh, also, you know, uh, in terms of the different projects, the number, if you count, you know, the number of projects, we lost one, I think, SOTOOTH, there is no people from the TSC, on the TSC from the SOTOOTH project, but, you know, we have other working groups and projects that have, that are now represented. So I think overall is definitely, uh, you know, we have achieved our goal. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I had this line short intro for the new members in the agenda. Um, this is just to give you a little bit of, you know, how this TSC is functioning for those who may not be as familiar as others. Uh, obviously there are people who, though they are new to the TSC, I feel like they were already part of the TSC because they have been, you know, pretty active on the TSC call and it's great. Now they can officially be part of the TSC, but, you know, um, there are things that are important to know. And I, you know, for one, uh, Arun asked me the other day, you know, how do I bring up new issues and stuff like this? So I, I thought, okay, I can spend a few minutes just giving you a few pointers. I'm not going to take everybody like through a, general tour, it would take too long and it would bore all the ones that already know about this. But, uh, you know, I think the important stuff that you ought to know is, so there's the agenda, obviously, I always put an agenda together. Practically speaking, I try to start setting up the draft around on Monday so that, you know, I'm done by Tuesday, depending on how much I have, I may call for agenda items on the mailing list explicitly. But anybody is welcome to, you know, uh, take a peek and and you know add stuff to the agenda if you feel like it. It's probably a good idea to let me know, but I get notified by the wiki anyway, so I will probably see it. And then um, and then I post it on the mailing list. I announce it uh, officially on Wednesdays. And as you've seen, for instance, Dan added an item which is great. It's like okay, you know, this I don't claim to know the truth on. <laughs> what ought to be on the agenda systematically. So any help here is welcome. And then there are issues. So we use the, the, the this, what we call the decision log um, to try to capture important issues and decisions on those issues. And so you, anybody can go and create a, a, an issue uh, uh, in the decision log that would then appear at the bottom of the agenda. We have some mechanism that includes automatically the list of uh, 
items that are in the decision log to be discussed. And, um, and you know, it's probably a good idea to bring it up. You, you can just go ahead and put it in decision log, but you know, uh, you may also want to discuss it on one of the calls before you formally put, you know, an issue together in the decision log because just to see if there is appetite for it, right? Because just because you're interested in something doesn't mean the TSC in general is going to be interested. And, you know, in general, I personally do that. I ask people, hey, there's this issue. Should we do something about it? And, you know, based on whether there's interest or not, then I go ahead and file a formal uh, this, uh, um, issue. And then, um, and then, of course, we have the uh, the GitHub repository. So initially, the, the the governance documents were a bit spread around into the wiki. And last year, we created a GitHub repo where we have a consolidated version of the governance documents. It's all linked from the TSC, um, from the wiki. But um, so when there are decisions that affects the governance, you know, so like if we change the process lifecycle. Then, you know, the other day we added the uh, uh, Calvair and uh, in, in addition to Semvair for, for releases. And so then we do a pull request against the, the repo. We say, yes, that looks good. And then we, we merge it and that gives us a consolidated. So the GitHub repo documentation is really considered to be the reference now. So yeah, thank you for showing that. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm not going to go much more into the details. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. Of course, we have the staff like people like Rai and you know, who are willing, who are very happy to help you. You can also reach out to me or Tracy, who is the vice chair. I should congratulate her for that. And uh, you know, Tracy has also, you know, she's been around a lot too. So she also has a lot of experience with the way we do things and I'm sure she can help you as well. Uh, you know, if you have any questions as to how to bring up something or how to go at anything that's TSC related. So I hope, uh, I didn't want to spend too much time. If there are specific questions, I'm happy to take them now or observations, comments. Thanks, right. Arnold. That was good introduction. Okay, thank you. So, you know, I, I wanted to try to keep it short, but to give at least some pointers. Uh, another thing I do want to, I will explain a little bit more now, is the quarterly reports, because people are not always completely um, sure about how we do this. So we try to, we have tried to streamline the, uh, the reporting from the projects. One of the, you know, one of the main functions that we have as TSC is to keep an eye on the different projects. We, I mean, when we have new project proposal, we will look at them and decide whether we want to create new projects or not approve them. But we also keep an eye on the existing ones. And so we have this process of quarterly reports. So we have this kind of rolling window of projects over the, the year uh, on a quarterly basis, each project has to fill out uh, and submit to the TSC a report. Initially, we were doing this and going through the reports, you know, I want to say excruciatingly. I mean, it was very time consuming. We did that online uh, uh, during the calls, I mean, and then we decided, okay, we're going to have the TSC members look at those reports offline prior to discussing them on the call. And uh, in an effort to streamline it even further, I, last year we decided to we basically don't discuss them unless there is something specific that needs to be discussed. And so it can be, so every time the new reports, I put them on the agenda to highlight the ones that were recently submitted. And so I will point them out and, you know, the TSC members have to read them and check the box, you know, to, to acknowledge they have actually reviewed them. You can, ask questions in the comment sections on the wiki, but um, on the call, I will, you know, just say, is there, so, and the, the people report, there is a section up in the report that says questions and issues for the TSC. So people make reports on the projects and also have the opportunity to say, hey, there's this thing I would like the TSC to look into or, you know, help from the TSC, whatever it is. 
And so, of course, if there are those things in, I will bring them up during the call so we have a chance to discuss it. And I will ask everybody if there is anything they want to highlight or discuss on the reports. But if there isn't, then we just basically gloss over them during the call. That's all I'm going to say. The idea is that we have these reports done, mostly being managed offline and to reduce the amount of time we spend during the calls on those. All right. Is there any questions on that? So we have, for today, we have actually three reports that were submitted. None of them have a section, you know, uh, have pointed out anything they wanted to bring up to the TSC specifically. There was a couple of questions, but uh, they've been addressed, I believe, on the reports in the comment sections. So let me ask it again now. I mean, is there, so Arun, yeah, you posted some questions. Did you get the answer you wanted? I think so, right? Those questions, they yes. were answered. Um, there was a follow-up required on this um, through one of the discussions that was on the working group. And I guess Brian pointed out that uh, there is a decision lock pending on this working group involvement or uh, that still needs to be brought up in one of the discussions. And apart from fabric, I guess I put up one more question recently on Aroha. Um, over there, I observed few report comments which said that th there were two points specifically which I want to bring up. One thing is it says that internship projects were completed, but some of them were not successfully completed. So wanted to see if that is something we need to see uh, further for this year's internship project. Is there any learnings from that which we should apply? Okay. Okay, but um, that's independent from the report there, right? Yes. The yeah. Okay. Uh, the last thing, Arno, I would point out on this one, there was a discussion about subprojects and what Fabric has been doing. And I replied saying, uh, you know, when we need a subproject, we just have one of our maintainers reach out to Rye. It's pretty informal. And we create another repo with, you know, Fabric dash whatever. Um, my question back was, you know, is there anything written down to formalize that? Um, I mean, I don't want a whole lot of process to get in the way, but we probably should have something written down for what's the criteria and, uh, you know, to create and maintain a new subproject. Maybe it's already written down. I don't know. I don't think it's written down. I, on, I know on the Aries and Indy side, we, the process is also rather informal, though we usually ask for some consensus out of the maintainers. So just one maintainer asking for it, it's not enough. We usually, all the maintainers know to ask around. And if you don't have three or four that are willing to support it, then we don't go forward. Right. We do discuss it on our contributor and maintainer meetings, and we have consensus there. And then we go ask. Somebody goes uh, asks and Rye. That sounds about like what we do. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, like, I agree with what Nathan said. We don't, I don't believe we have anything written down, but I don't care to have anything written unless there's a problem that needs to be formalized. Because, I mean, you know, I, if there's no problem really, there's no problem to solve, we don't have to do anything. I'd rather keep it that way. I see that Brian has his hand up. Yep. Yeah, sorry, I didn't want to in, in, interrupt others. Uh, uh, back to Arun's question about uh, uh, the mentorships. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's worth bringing up whenever we see things in project reports to ask, is this something project specific to talk about and maybe address, or is it something systemic uh, worth addressing? So thank you, Arun, for bringing it up. Uh, the uh, the mentorship programs always have a bit of attrition. Um, uh, you know, projects won't necessarily get all the way to completion. Uh, and we do monitor that as staff. Um, and, and also payouts to students uh, can be, uh, I, you know, are, are often based on achieving, are usually based on achieving milestones. And we will step in and make a judgment call. Was it the student who kind of dropped out? Was it that the original mentor got busy and, and didn't engage, which means it's no fault of the student. We, 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 do, we do involve ourselves in those projects and sometimes they just don't work out. Uh, I didn't. I don't think there's anything Aroha specific about this, um, uh, about those projects not succeeding. It's just I think the students that were picked um, did did drop out just in terms of becoming you know, less responsive. Um, 
than they needed to be. Uh, so, so that's that's it. Uh, uh, and and we're always thinking about adjusting how we adjust the mentorship programs for the next year. Uh, so um, uh, we're watching that. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Daniel. Thank I was going to ask you anyway. So go ahead, <laughs> Daniel. Let me find the mute button. There we go. Okay. Um, I like the idea of the lightweight process. I'm I'm cool with that. One of my my concerns though is. How do I identify um, a project that's a sub project that's live and kicking versus one that was an experiment and has been, you know, is, is no longer a going concern. Um, I don't know that any of these are falling into that second category, but having been in open source projects before I know that's something that tends to happen is that sub projects tend to get forgotten about. Um, if I, if I could. Um, so we do have, if you look at the uh, hyperledger dash archives github org. Uh, you'll see the fate of quite a number of those. Um, and what usually happens is I will see that there are projects that have no commits and I will ask the maintainers if it's appropriate to archive them. Um, and then if yes, we archive them. We have some uh, that have been in the process of being archived for many months or years, but it's not something that I really push on very hard. Um, that's how it happens. And we have a similar process for labs for that matter. So it's very similar. But we, again, it's not formalized, but I always, you know, I'm always happy when Rai bring those up because I'm like, well, it's good. Somebody is kind of looking out for those things we need to sweep a bit, you know, do a little bit of house cleaning. Does that work for you, Dano, or do you think we need to do more? Yeah, I think that's great. We just haven't been hit by the please clean up your old moldy project uh, request from Rai yet, so. Yeah, you've not been around long enough, I guess, but that will come, I'm sure. All right, any other questions related to reports specifically? Hi, it's um, not a question, but oh, I just wanted to mention that uh, it's Sarah here from the Rojo Maintainers yes. team, and I also have Andre here. So if you have any questions regarding the mentorships or anything else, we're here to answer them as usual when we present the reports. So if you have any like specific questions for us, we're ready to answer. Just, just, just note. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, another question which I had put in Iroha, but probably this applies in generic. Maybe it is already answered. It's just that I'm not aware of is, um, is so the report also mentions that there is one security audit done and a security issue was identified by one of the user which was fixed in last quarter. Is, are these things um, taken care via the, the approach on security reporting procedure, which is listed out in the web, web page? Is this being done through that? Or do we need something else around it? Well, uh, if, I, if I may, um, so the, the feedback that came from the uh, person from the community, it wasn't like a severe, like actual security breach. Andre is here to explain the technical details of it, but it was like, um, it seems like security breach, but it's it doesn't seem to be like something severe as far as I understand. And about the security audit, it was arranged by Hyperledger. So it's something that we were thinking they might uh, post somewhere and it's their own like process kind of thing. We are currently in the process of doing that. Um, I typically like to do blog posts and stuff. Um, if you'd like to take a look at it, because the, the Roja developers were part of it, right? So they were made aware of any of the, the issues we found, as far as I'm aware, Sarah. So, yeah. But yeah, I um, think that I, it's the. Oh, sorry. I thought the question was about um, that the results were not posted somewhere, that sort of thing. They haven't been yeah. yet because I typically do like a full blog post and everything like that and try to get, you know, developers to talk about it. Um, but we can, I can throw them up on the wiki like right now. So. In fact, I'll yeah, do that. Sure. If like. um, it's, 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 I think it's not a question for me, but for Arun, so yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I, yep. Okay. I will make sure that we're all up to date. I have a couple that, um, yeah. But Arun, does that address your question? Sure. Yes. That 
it answers um yeah as long as we keep track of these things it in kind of it will in a way help us right when we design something new or in kind of it will kind of help us in suggesting something else to a new project for example I wanted to make sure that these are documented somewhere okay Tracy, there's a whole way oh, wait there sorry. i was going to say arun there's a whole section on our wiki that has all of the audits that have been done for all the projects um i think i'm just behind on aroha because it was just recently completed and we're currently doing a new one for fabric 22 like right now so if you'd like i'll i'll send you the link it, just under the hyperledger security there's a whole section called project audits if you click on it there's all of the published audits or all the audit reports published there thanks dave I'll, I'll look into it yep and so by the way i'm going to let tracy talk because she has a hand raised but i should have pointed that out we have been actually as of late we've been using the uh the the uh, raise hand feature of the zoom meeting so with the growing number of members it might be appropriate to use it and you know we're not very strict about it if you really feel an urge to interject something because you know it's part of the conversation you feel free to interject but you know uh, it, otherwise it's probably a good idea to use it so that it allows us to get to everybody who wants to speak with that talking over one another Tracy, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna pretty much say something similar to what Dave did. Arun, there's an entire process around security audits when they're conducted. Um, there's a security reporting mechanism as well. Um, I think we have security at hyperledger.org as well as some security features in JIRA, um, maybe even GitHub issues as well. Um, so there's ways to report security issues such that it's not open to the world, right? Um, and uh, those audits are done. I, I can't remember what the, the exact process is, but it is documented on the wiki, as Dave mentioned. Um, so just FYI, there is there is process and, and kind of some um, some good information out there that you can look for. All right, thank you, Tracy. And by the way, one more piece of information. We use the TSC uh, channel on Rocket Chat during the calls to have side conversations, sometimes like bring up uh, links and whatnot. We don't use the Zoom chat feature. So with that being said, I think we're done with the reports. Is there anything else? Anybody wanted to say something about one of the reports? Otherwise we can move on. So there is always this link to kind of highlight, you know, if you want to know what next, what, what the projects is next to report, you can look at the, uh, the, the page that's linked for the upcoming reports. So now we are moving to the discussion part of the uh, loosely, you know, called discussion uh, part of the agenda. Sometimes I have a section that's decision where I highlight items that have been basically discussed and they only need to be, uh, you know, uh, decided on. But otherwise, everything kind of falls into this discussion part, which doesn't necessarily we mean a lot of discussion. But anyway, so we have Dan here today who wanted to us to get warmed up on the business of voting. <laughs> Dan. Hey. Thanks for uh, the time. Uh, I inserted this at the beginning of the discussion thinking that you guys probably want to spend in, um, uh, a decent amount of time on the other topics. And hopefully this is a fairly brief one for you. Uh, periodically, the working groups will uh, elect new chairs. And the process that we had decided on in the past was that the uh, TSC will formally approve those. Uh, and this is the case for the Diversity, Civility, and Inclusion Working Group. And if you're not familiar with, with our working group, uh, this is our effort to make sure that we're growing a healthy community within Hyperledger that we can all be a proud of, we can all be proud of participating in. And we are ready for the first transition there. And I see Lindsay Noon is on the call. And Lindsay has volunteered to uh, take on this role. She started working with us in the working group 
over a year ago. And I think at that point, Lindsay might have been with Google still. Uh, and now Lindsay has her own startup. And uh, she brings a wealth of experience with her in uh, this DCI space. And uh, importantly, a lot of passion for uh, helping continue to grow that healthy community. And so Lindsay, I don't know if, if you have anything that you'd like to uh, share with the group. Definitely. Um, good morning. And it's, it's really uh, great to, to be connected with you all, uh, even virtually. Um, I have been, uh, you know, as, as um, Dan just said, really involved in the Hyperledger community through um, working with the technology with my own startup. Um, but over the course of, you know, my career in tech, um, really just love to see how welcoming and inviting and innovative the blockchain community has been. And so any opportunity to get more involved in that and contribute positively um, is, is a welcomed opportunity. And I appreciate it and really look forward to working with you all. All right, thank you. Welcome, Lindsay. Hello. All right, so that's the proposition. The proposal is to approve Lindsay. I don't see any reason we wouldn't do that. Is there any concerns or anybody wants to comment? Tracy. Yeah, I just uh, was curious, Dan, I don't know if I heard uh, the, the rest of the DCI working group is behind us as well. Yeah, so we've had the, the last couple of meetings, we've been talking about this transition um, and uh, they've, they've been lightly attended meetings, but um, everybody's been supportive. Great, thanks. Bobby. Hi, everybody. Um, it was my assumption and I could be misguided um, from when Salona was around that we in the working groups, take a survey of the working group with a question on the survey about the new member, um, leadership member, and the community um, responds to the survey and then it's brought to the TSC. That's what we're doing um, in my working group. And if that's not correct, um, I can just bring the name to the TSC. So I don't so know if there's a formal yeah. process that I'm familiar with for each working group, other than each working group within their own subcommunity there reaches a decision. Yeah, I, I think that I just posted a link in the chat um, because I had at one point thought that as well, Bobby. Um, I think we had discussed it, but then the TSC decided that it was really just the TSC's um, responsibility to uh, make that decision. Um, so there's a in that uh, link that I posted, there's a, a comment that basically says that the TSC uh, will appoint the chair. Um, so that when the chair decides to step down, the TSC will then appoint another chair with input from the community and existing chair. So that's why I asked the question um, about whether or not the, the rest of the working group had had the conversation, um, just to make sure that you know everybody was on board. But I don't think there's any formal survey that's required, Bobby. Um, just one more follow-up. Is that for co-chairs as well or vice chairs, assistant chairs? I don't think we have the answer to that question, but Tracy, <laughs> do you? I don't I don't have the answer to that question, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we ever I think co-chairs were something that were um, kind of talked about after this process document was created. Um, and then this document was never updated to reflect whatever was decided there, but I don't even know what was decided. Um, if that was just a um, decision of the working group or if it was, uh, if it had to come to the TSC. So my, my personal bias is to push all these decisions as far to the edge, to the people who, so that's, I, I'm totally like, let the, let the working group do that. I agree. I was going to say something like that too. I was like, you know, again, I don't want the more process than it's really needed. And so, um, I mean, you know, based on the text that uh, Tracy pointed out, thanks for doing this. Um, you know, I think we are already in the in the situation where we have, so we have input from the community, 
and it's being communicated back to us by the existing chair. So we make a decision on the chair. And then beyond that, we leave it to the chair to figure it out with their working groups. I think that's the answer, Bobby. Perfect, thank you. Though that did give me the opportunity to remember that part of the transition discussion we had was um, we wanted to make sure that we invited TSC members to the next uh, uh, to the next DCI working group call, just so that you guys can get a little bit more involved in and aware of uh, what the agenda is for that group. And then for those of you who who are new, the the DCI working group provided a set of recommendations to this T to the TSC and to the board to the community at large uh, during the middle of the summer. Uh, and part of those recommendations were that this subject matter should be part of the TSC discussions on a periodic basis rather than um, risking having it sort of pigeonholed off to the side in the working group where it, where it doesn't get the, the visibility that it needs to be effective. So I expect um, uh, that you'll probably hear more from, from the working group in this call. And if, if some of you on the TSC wanna help champion that work by participating with the working group, I think that would that'd be great. Mm. We even, um, to Dan's point, talked a, a bit about um, having a DCI um, sort of champion within the, the TCI committee, um, you know, work more closely with us on collaborative projects so that um, the real practical and strategic work is, um, you know, ingrained in the conversation and not just siloed off. Um, so I definitely, um, you know, as you guys get ramped up, and I know there's still probably a lot going on in the background that you have to, to land, um, but would love to, to really start talking about how we move those projects and recommendations forward um, in a more detailed way. All right, and I think, you know, back to what Dan was saying about making sure the TSC, you know, keeps an eye on what's going on. Uh, obviously, I mean, Dan has been quite helpful in this regard to bring up the stuff you know to to the to to the TSC and I think as chair you know it's definitely part of your role that would be helpful to the TSC to 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 act like as a liaison sort of you know kind of uh, role. Absolutely. So uh, back to the decision, we have to make a decision. I think for this kind of decision, I, I don't hear any controversy <laughs> brewing there. So I'm happy to say, you know, I'm proposing to approve uh, Lindsay as the, you know, appointed the, as chair of the DCI working group. And I would like to have just a show of hand kind of thing. Oh, we can actually do that. We've done that in the past. Let's play a, a more with the yes, no. Yeah, I was just yes, gonna no. I was gonna motion that we vote. Um, or no. You want to vote so, how? That uh, Lindsay becomes the new DC, yes, please. DCI working. Thank you. Chair. So if somebody wants to second that, that'd be great. Second. Thank you. All right. So and you can all use the yes and no buttons on the thing to say yes. We don't have to have a formal roll call, but we can do it this way. Does anybody object or wants to abstain? I don't know what your emoji means, Dan. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's clapping. So. <laughs> and Bobby, Brian is having a coffee. So that's great. There's more features to these Zoom meetings than I knew. Anyway, I only see green. I will declare this as passed. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations, Lindsay. Yeah, we had, uh, we had 10 votes for and, and that was it. That's good enough. Thanks. All Thank right. So let's move on. Um, lessons learned for the TSC election. So, you know, as uh, I mean, Dave was running the show this year and he tried to, we had tried to be more 
uh, organized this year by putting together a plan, the staff did, you know, presenting it to the TSC, agreeing to all the deadlines and all that, the steps involved, and then executing it. Of course, you know, it's, there are always bugs. And so Dave had to do quite a bit of running around trying to patch the holes. And uh, he, my understanding is, you know, he has been updating the plan to reflect all, all the changes so that we would have a record of what really we did or he did. And, you know, we would be better off for next year. This thing comes up every year and we spend an absurd amount of time discussing the process for the TS election. So all of this is try to streamline it. So is there anything more that needs to be said on the TSC election at this point in terms of the process? Dave, do you have anything? Yeah, go ahead. I <clears throat> just wanted to say that uh, Rai also did a great deal of work to help um, behind the scenes. And um, I think this year went off as smoothly as we've ever seen, right? Um, we tried something to be radically transparent with the election mailing list that anybody could volunteer to be on. Um, that was a private mailing list where I tried my best to make sure that all communications were CC'd to that list. So anybody on that could see, you know, inbound requests, outbound replies, all that kind of stuff. So um, we did have a little bit of problem with the Condorcet tool. And my main recommendation for next year is to have the TSC approve us to do, you know, something different, or maybe not even you guys approving it, but, you know, we'll find something better because the Condorcet tools emailing capabilities seem to be um, lacking. They don't even use DKIM or any of the other email deliverability things. And so we relied heavily on um, Salesforce's marketing cloud this year to make sure that we got reminders out to everybody because it has much higher deliverability. So that is my summary of what I thought went well, what I think we can improve on. I would really appreciate feedback both directly here or email or whatever. I mean, it's your meeting, Arno. But um, uh, yeah, if you really want to have a deeper discussion on things that went well or, or could be done better next year, um, you know, find me on chat, email me. Um, I'm going to be putting all of the notes from this year, including all of the template, the email templates and, and all of that in a postmortem and just put it in a box and put a bow on it for next year. Um, I hope that that will function as a script for next year because yeah. I, I really did write it out like it was, you know, on this date, do this, on this date, do this, right? And uh, I tried to capture it all on the wiki, so. Yeah, yeah no, that's, I think that was the right thing to do. And uh, I, this is exactly what I thought. There was a form of script that we would be reusing. I, from my point of view, I, the biggest challenge seemed to be with people not receiving email, despite all the efforts that have been put into getting the right email address for everyone. And I think there'll be some discussions that probably need to be uh, uh, with regard to, you know, again, who qualifies, you know, who has become, what does it take to become, uh, to be eligible to be part of the election process? Bawa is on the, has his hands, his hand raised. Yeah. Um, first, first, I would like to uh, thank uh, David, Ryan, and the other team to uh, make the election uh, work. And uh, in my opinion, I, I think for the next year, we have uh, uh, two um, improvements. Um, the first one is, uh, uh, I, I think we should publish the, the election information and the process in more places, such as those uh, project mail list and working group mail list. And uh, we can ask the working group chairs to help uh, propaganda the information too. And uh, uh, secondly, it's related to the time schedule. Um, we should uh, refine the, the election uh, time to avoid uh, those overlap with the uh, uh, holidays. You know, uh, each year for the first uh, two weeks of October, October is always the, the China's national holiday. So yeah, there's uh, some feedback from the China community. Yeah, that's my two cents. Thanks, Arno. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th
Okay, thanks. So I guess we fell a little bit on this and maybe that will. Sorry, I, I was muted. Yeah, I'm muted speaking to my screen. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Bawa. I, I think that's a failure on our part. And hopefully, you know, it shows the problem with not having enough diversity on the TSC because we moved it from August to September, October, because we said, hey, we're all on vacation in summer, which, you know, is not necessarily true for everybody around the world. So we should, uh, that sounds like something we need to maybe look at again. Everybody loves talking about the TSC election process anyway, so I do expect us to spend more time on that. <laughs> um, all right, so thanks again for all the effort that was put into at least trying to make it better, and we'll keep doing that. Practice makes perfect, right? Um, so next on the agenda, I wanted to give the new TSC members um, these are the non-incumbent people, right? Uh, an opportunity to, you know, share with us if they have any views or ideas on things that we should do moving forward. I mean, we finished the previous term with a call during which I gave the opportunity for everybody to basically do a bit of a retrospective and thinking about talking about what they thought that worked well and maybe not so well that we should take into account moving forward. And so I thought, well, the new members didn't have a chance to speak up because they were not there. So now is your chance. If there is anything, and you know, I don't expect us, I don't want us to drill into anything specific now. It's just giving a sense if there are things that you have ideas that, you know, hey, is something that I think the TSC should do is, you know, you can do that now. And obviously you, we will have to get to those more formally, you know, to get them addressed, but just to get a general sense if people have ideas. And by the way, so oh, yeah, Grace, go ahead. Hey, um, I don't have a good idea off the top of my head for what, you know, things to improve upon, but I was wondering, have we ever done or has the TSC ever had a survey out to the community asking for feedback and what they would want to see out of the TSC more? I know Hyperledger generally does community surveys and feedback, but I'm not sure if the TSC has done one. I don't believe and I was thinking they if they hadn't, that. maybe that would be a good idea. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Uh, we uh, To answer your question, no, we have not done that. Okay, so yeah. Because um, yeah, getting their feedback and how we're performing and what they want to see out of us over the next year, I think would, would be valuable um, as yeah. part of it. That sounds good. Open other thoughts idea. too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Arun? Hey, um, thanks for this. So I wanted to just bring up one topic um, here. So um, this time, it used to be my conflict with my work working meeting. So um, at my work, I have this meeting at the same time. So I used to miss out most of this TSC meeting because of it. And now I got a chance to attend these meetings and by saying no to work meetings, right? So it could be the same way for most of the project maintainers. Um, maybe they have conflicts with other things. So following up with TSC meetings is kind of difficult for them. And at least in last few weeks or last few months, I have seen few kind um, some miscommunications happening and then um, I just searched for some other topic and then I came to know that few of the things are even reported and these are publicly being followed by many people on, around the world. So I um, wanted to see if there is a way for us to improve communication between the TSC and rest of the community in terms of we can focus for now on, let's say the only the projects which are under Hyperledger and the, those maintainers, if there is a way for us to give those feedback. Um, do we want to relook into those process of how we share information or what decisions have been made here should be relayed to everyone over there because it should I feel it should be a two-way thing uh, than 
it, it should so that that opens up inclusiveness right and that opens up in a way uh, people to give feedback on uh, to the tsa itself for that matter yes thank you for bringing that up i, I do think you're touching on an important point that you know we have touched on before i don't know that we ever really said okay what are we going to do about it per se but uh, i mean i think we have lamented over <laughs> the fact that we didn't always have as much participation or connection with the even like the the maintainers of the different projects i mean obviously several of us we are you know our maintainers in different projects and so we do act a bit as a liaison with the projects in that regard, but not necessarily, you know, we don't necessarily have as much connection as maybe we should have. Anybody else wants to comment? Dan, I don't know if you have ideas if you want to follow up on that. If anybody wants to follow up, you just speak up now. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the things I wanted to bring up as well is the notion of liaisons, because we don't have representation in this meeting from all the working groups and all of the different projects. Um, we have it from a lot of them. A lot of them we get just by having members of the TSC being maintainers or participants in those projects. Um, but like, you know, some of the working groups have no representation. And my thought was we, we should do two things. Number one, we should probably do a poll of the TSC members and the people who attend regularly uh, with pro which projects they consider themselves to be participants in and could talk about the ground truth about the project in case we have questions. And from that poll, we can figure out what holes we have. And maybe we should consider, you know, just seeing the holes that might encourage some TSC members to, to call into their regular calls, just to sit in and listen and see what's going on, or maybe consider formally assigning liaisons to those projects to make sure that there is communication, that we, you know, get a better feel about what's going on with it. All right, sounds interesting, good. Bobby? Yeah, um, I think that the uh, meeting recordings um, are priceless. And I know we do that um, developer newsletter. I think that maybe at the bottom, if we just put links to all the meeting recordings, I know that's a lot of work. Um, and I know the learning materials working group attempts to do this, to have one spot for people to look to say, oh, I want to hear that recording this week, instead of having to niddle down into the wiki to try to find it. Mm -hmm. Interesting idea. That's a practical thing we might be able to do. Um, so I, at one point, started uh, posting the TSC recordings to YouTube. Uh, I, I, was, I, someone requested that I not um, because it was it was too easy uh, to for reasons. They had the reasons. Um, I I'm open to publishing those on YouTube um or all of the meeting recordings to youtube uh, if that's easier uh but i think each working group is going to need to kind of come to consensus as to whether or not they're comfortable with that um so that's an option okay Lindsay? yeah um Hopefully, you know, um, you guys have more more success here. But one of the things that we noted in our recommendations were that we got historically low participation in surveys. I think it lingered at around 10 percent. And another one of the um, participants from Cloud Foundry also um, had similar results on surveys. So ended up suggesting some feedback. Um, around alternative methods, um, i.e. interviews directly with people who are um, more active in the conversation or different outreach um, strategies uh, that really could collect that, the, that feedback that we're looking for. But I don't know, the, the DCI working group seemed to, to historically uh, really struggle with getting participation rates and surveys that, that would indicate um, a true poll of how the community feels about an issue. And I think, Dan, if you wanna elaborate on any anything that I might've missed, uh, please feel free, but I'll drop the link to the recommendations in the chat so everybody can reference it. 
No, no, but this is interesting. I do know that it was difficult to get people engaged in responding to the survey. And, uh, and, uh, and, you know, we have also, for instance, a maintainer's lease, which is dead silence pretty much, you know, all the time. <laughs> and when, when by, it seems like, you know, by accident, I want to say, you know, somebody posts there, it's largely seems to be ignored. And so, uh, this is a challenge I think we have. And, um, you know, one of the, one of the things that I took out from the, the kind of like debriefing we had at the end of the previous term was, you know, yeah, we should work more on creating one community. And this also came up through at the Hyperledger Summit, member summit, and um, a few weeks ago. And I think that remains a big challenge for us to, to try to tackle. I don't know that there's a magic solution to this problem, but we definitely ought to try to do more. Bawa? Yeah, I was just curious to know what's the number for other open source communities, like the uh, giving the survey. I'm sorry, what are you saying? See if there are other communities, if there are things we could borrow. If yeah, as Barbara said, that we have a uh, ten percent uh, participant of the survey, right? And uh, I want to maybe we can compare the number with other uh, open source communities. Yeah, I don't know if we have that, but. This is David, I have a thought, and I'm sorry, I would have raised my hand, but it's not letting right. me. I guess if you're a host, you can't raise your hand perhaps, or I can't just yeah, yeah, yeah. figure it right. out. I mean, it's, again, sorry to interrupt, but I, I do have some feedback about how we went about gathering this sort of feedback in other communities. We, I've done some audits in a couple of different communities, and you're right, survey fatigue is real and it's hard to work around. I mean, the thing that I've seen and done that has worked really well is more of an informational interview approach because you really, beyond just having an opportunity to, to talk to people, you know, in a way that gets them to give you feedback, which doesn't necessarily happen if you send them a survey, they may or may not fill it out. It also, the open-ended nature of it is really helpful. I mean, a survey, you only get feedback from the, you know, related to the questions you ask, but there may be some you know, unexpected things that people could tell us that we wouldn't craft a survey question around. So anyway, I would encourage maybe an informational interview approach. And there are a lot of us, if every TSC uh, member, for example, spoke to just one or two people, that's a, you know, a, a pretty, gets us a lot of good feedback. So that could be an approach too. you know, we could ask uh, each TSC member to reach out to one or two or three people. And then we could, you know, gather feedback and, and collate it and aggregate it that way. So I've seen that work really well. Informational interviews for, for on audit and other communities have worked better than surveys. All right, that sounds interesting. I, I don't want to spend more time on this now, but I think this is, you know, clearly an issue we have to have on our list of things to look further into. And um, I will use that as a segue to get to the next agenda item, which I put in, which is somewhat related in terms of, you know, improving understanding of what's going on. Um, you know, I, somebody, so the, um, um, you know, I talked earlier at the beginning of the call, you know, about the quarterly reports we have from the projects. And, you know, I said, well, we're trying to be quick and effective about, you know, going through those reports and not spending time on the calls. But recently it became pretty clear in the discussion uh, regarding Transact that a lot of us, despite you know, going carefully through all the reports that have been posted to date, you know, we didn't really have a good understanding of what was going on with that project. And so to me, this really meant that, okay, the quality reports don't effectively communicate to the TSC what's going on. So, we need to do better at that. And we may need to change the template used for the reports. And one thing that I think we have now at our disposal that we haven't really been using much is the insights tool that the Linux Foundation has created. Uh, uh, Rai spent quite a bit of time tuning it to the Hyperledger. So we have now all these dashboards that give you all sorts of numbers and so uh, what I would like people to consider, and you know, we don't have to make the decision now, we're almost out of time, but you know, 
to think about it is, you know, I, I would like to propose basically that, you know, all the reports have a link to the letters quarter, um, you know, uh, report. So there's a URL, I put it in the agenda, explicitly the whole URL, because essentially you can set the, you know, we can all use the same pattern for the URL that links directly to the relevant data in the in the insight tool for your project so there's a piece which has the project name and then there's a time range and so the idea is you know all you have to do in your report is to change the the time uh, range so that it points to the last quarter for your project and it just you know every member can already do that but i'm trying to make it easier for us to have that information really at the tip of our fingers by when you read at the report, you have a link to the to the latest data on the project, and you can directly find the relevant information and be able to browse through this. So that's one idea that I think you know. But if anything, um, looking back at um, I think you know what uh, what we said we should work on. It's it's one of those things, right? So I would like us to spend a bit more time on this. And if there are other ideas on how to make those reports more meaningful and then, you know, bringing up the right information, um, I think, you know, all ideas are welcome. I don't know if there's anybody has any reaction in the one minute we have left, but uh, we can discuss it further, obviously, uh, moving forward. Hot. Yeah, I just wanted to comment that uh, that community bridge information is really useful and I already, you know, use it to do quarterly reports. It makes, you know, doing the quarterly reports very easy. All right, thank you. Okay, so we're out of time. I just wanted to point out we have two issues that we inherited from the previous term um, that, you know, uh, need to be worked on to get better drafted proposals. And uh, I'm looking for volunteers. If anybody wants to help, um, you can, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be formal per se. You can just look at the wiki and contribute there, either by taking the pen, trying to put a proposal together, or editing what's there, or commenting. You know, these are anything like this is helpful. I always, you know, I strongly believe in making concrete proposals. They don't have to be perfect, but as soon as you put a proposal on the table, we can all look at, we can make edit and make progress moving forward. And then finally getting to an answer. So that's usually the mode of operation I like to use. So with that being said, I don't want to abuse everybody's time. So I suggest we close the call on this. I knew we had a full agenda, it proved me right. <laughs> but uh, I think it was good. I'm happy to work with all you, all of you and look forward to the whole year. And so we'll talk again next week. Thank you all for joining today. Goodbye.